Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to pick up another project and technically it's not really a project. It's more of something to drive during the winter. So usually I drive my F350 all winter, but it's really hard on it. So sometimes, actually most of the winter, it gets below zero and I usually just remote start the truck, which it doesn't bother it at all. It just, to me, I feel like it's really hard on the truck to do that. So what I've been looking for was a small pickup. I was just really looking for like a Toyota pickup or like a Ford Ranger, which I'm going to pick up a Ford Ranger as long as everything checks out. So I already have the trailer hooked up to the truck and we're gonna go check this thing out. Hopefully I can get it for pretty cheap. All right, so there she is. Let's get her loaded up onto the trailer. Looks like it may be got hydro locked. So that might be an issue. It doesn't actually crank over. And then when I was looking at it, I also noticed that somebody drilled a nice old fuel tank hole to get the gas out, but they didn't drill it in the bottom. I don't understand it. doesn't make sense. Got the Ford Ranger loaded up. You can see it looks like the front bumper is missing, but besides it being, you know, a bunch of mud that needs to be cleaned up and maybe hydro locked, it looks pretty rust free. There is a dent right here. I'll have to fix that. It looks kind of like, you know, this flare is popped out. Kind of like the Hellcat flares. And then over on this side, I'm not exactly sure why the spare's on there, but it has the spare on there and the other wheel. Oh, I guess the other wheel is ready to blow out. But I'll probably just end up getting a whole new set of tires for this anyway. It has a little bit of camber on both sides, so it may need to be aligned. There may be some suspension stuff going on under here. You can see that one's kind of leaking right there, but it's been replaced and you can't see it. It's been replaced before. You can see the Zert on the top, but I'll try to get this thing running today and kind of go from there. What I'm gonna do first is check the intake and then maybe pull the spark plugs. I was thinking about this on the way home and maybe what was going on was he's doing some good burn offs because look at this. These tires are almost brand new and just that one is all the way bald. So he's doing some one wheel peels and uh, and then he, he hydro locked. All right, let's pull the air box and see if water went through the engine. Mm, I mean, there's some mud water in there. Oh yeah, <laughs> it uh, it got just a little bit hydro locked. I bet. Got a five gallon pail of purple power just to uh, just to clean can ends. Bye, can end. Got the three spark plugs out of the driver's side. The passenger side ones are a little bit harder. Let's see if she cranks before she would not. Kind of cranking. Doesn't sound like it has any compression though. Plugs back in. Let's try to start her up. I don't know if the battery has enough juice. Nope. New battery. Let's go. Backfiring through the intake. Interesting. There's some stuff smoking too. Wonder if are these timing belt or are these chain? They have to be a chain. I'm gonna spray some starting fluid in there and see if we get something. A little bit better result. It's not technically starting fluid, but brake cleaner. Hmm. Doesn't sound like it has any compression. Could be from that burnout. Oh yeah, he was he was definitely doing a, a burnout. Look at this. Man must have been at the, uh, the truck truck show at PMI. I'm guessing that's what happened. And you can see all the mud. We get all the mud on the frame. Look at that gray exhaust hanger too. Whew. Man, look at this brand new, is that a spare or is that a an actual tire? Made in USA. I think this is an actual, like same matching tire. No, maybe not. I think what's going on is it doesn't seem like there's any coolant in the radiator or overflow bottle. It looks like he mud bogged it and it could have been hydro locked maybe. I'm, I'm guessing it was hydro locked at some point because there's so much mud in the filter and then you can see there's mud past the filter as well. But there's also like a burnout that was done 
it sounds like it has zero compression, but that could also be because there's water in the cylinders, it was hydrolocked a long time ago, and now the rings are just stuck kind of closed and there's not they're not building any compression. So let's try to crank her up one more time. I unfortunately don't have any starting fluid right now and we'll see we'll see if she starts. I don't, I don't think it's gonna happen. Nope. And uh oh yeah that's that's great right there. That is that's premium. Oh man you can see oh man you can feel the grit from the sand. Oh, 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 you can see the mud. Oh, it's so bad. I wonder how much mud is in here. Oh I, oh, I can't even imagine. Let's open the throttle body and spray some brake cleaner in there and try her. Come on. No compression. There is no compression in this thing. Oh, well, you know, it was 50 50. I got her for 800 bucks. That's not a bad deal. I don't know why the key doesn't come out. Let's try to... You have to like... How do you get these keys out? Shouldn't it just be like my truck? Oh man. Another key fiasco. How the hell? Whatever. Whatever. Unfortunately, try to start this a bunch of different ways and she still will not fire up. So one thing that I thought about was since so much water or it looks like so much water and mud went into and through the engine, maybe it's not starting up because the cats are plugged and there's three cats. It could have just, you know, all that sand and stuff could have got up against that honeycomb and possibly clogged up the cats which is making it so it won't actually start because the exhaust isn't able to get out of the, you know, out of the engine. But at this point, I'm not exactly sure. It doesn't sound like it has much compression. When I crank it, a bunch of smoke and unburnt, you know, you know when you have like a bad timing belt, it blows it back out the intake. Um, but these I think are timing chain and I doubt that the chain is bad. So it could be the cat's plugged up. I don't have my saws all here. So I'm guessing what I'm gonna have to do is I planned on getting rid of that stuff anyway, because it looks like it's all been redone. It looks like they've been cut off multiple times and they just have been chasing, putting new cats on. But I think I could uh, just cut them off or just cut across and then see if she actually starts up. Now I have the Ranger over at the junkyard and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll it off and I'm gonna half roll it off so I can cut the cats off of it so I can see if they're plugged. It doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to unbolt them just because the bolts look pretty iffy and there's like a bunch of stuff coming out of the uh, cats as well. So we'll get those cut off, figure out if those are plugged then try to restart her with the cats off of there. I have the Ranger off the trailer, but we have a casualty of war and I have some starting fluid. But on the way over here through the construction, they're redoing the highway. Looks like I picked up something. It looks like a uh, one of those clamps or something. So I'm gonna drive home and then pull it out. It's definitely in there and it's definitely losing air. So it's not worth pulling out right now because I doubt I'll be able to patch that. It's pretty large, or put a plug in it, it's pretty large. Plus I don't like putting plugs in trailers, trailer tires. And I just put these tires on, they have like 50 miles on them. So that's, that's always great. But I'll order another tire and uh, then I'll, I'll swap it once it gets here. But yeah, we'll just kind of work with that. Once I get home, I was just kind of glad I saw that without, I don't like blowing trailer tires out if you guys haven't noticed yet. But what I'm gonna do now is I pulled the cats off of here. It looked like there's some stuff in the main cats. So I have some starting fluid. I have a battery. We're gonna try to start her up and maybe she starts. At this point, I should probably get sponsored by starting fluid with how much I use. It's my jam. So let's just spritz some in here. I'll actually have to open this with my other hand.
and cranking a little bit slow. Let's let's try a different battery. Fully charged battery on there. Let's see if she goes. Come on, baby. I think she needs more spray. Got more spray in her? Let's try her out. Ooh. That does not sound good. Come on, baby. It, uh, it sounds very odd. It sounds like a, uh, like a machine off of Dr. Seuss. So I think I got some, some spray on the camera. Uh-oh, the lens might not be happy about that. But I don't think this engine's gonna, people say Ford ranges don't die, but I, I feel like the, uh, the meme is over. So we got a dead Ford Ranger right here that won't won't run four liter down. So Ford Rangers aren't as, as good as everybody says they are. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna do it today. Really happy that I got the Ford Ranger because I wanted kind of a winter beater so I didn't have to drive my truck when it's extremely cold, starting it up in the morning to drive it, you know, 15, 20 miles each way is, is pretty hard on a diesel. So, and I don't wanna leave it plugged in all winter. So, the Ford Ranger is the next best option. So I'll end up replacing the four liter and get her all buttoned up with a bunch of new parts, clean all this high school mudding, you know, high school kid that went mudding and hydrolocked his engine and ran a bunch of mud through it. But we'll get this all sorted out. I'm gonna end the video here, super pumped about the Ford Ranger. I cannot wait until she runs and drives. She'll be pretty quick because it's gonna be my winter beater and winter is almost here. So if you like these videos, make sure to click the subscribe button, thumbs up, throw a comment below. As always, see you guys next time.